What is up, everyone? Brandon First, a.k.a. First Report, representing the first Off the Bench Podcast Network. Everyone comes off the bench. We are first. Welcome into another edition of The Change Up. We break down everything Major League Baseball has to offer. With me, as always, my co-host, Brianna Winner. You can find Brianna at bwinner12. Brianna, how are you feeling today? Just no. <laughs> yeah. Just my answer is just no. Got it. Yeah, it's uh, it's not a whole lot of fun for uh, you know. The I, I put fans. A, I, I put a frown at one of my things, so it's not fun. <laughs> nope. And it's been probably two or three or four podcasts since we've done a podcast, and then within twenty four hours, some big news breaks. Um, that ended last week uh, before I could even get the episode out. Um, we had some news that Brianna will touch on in the winner's circle. Probably wanna. the biggest news of the week. I know she doesn't want to, but she I is really a trooper. Don't want to. She's going to fight through it. Uh, we do have some other news we're going to break down. Of course, we have the three up, three down, but we are going to start with a fired Joe, and it's Joe Girardi uh, with the Philadelphia Phillies. He has been let go. And since then, the fire, uh, the, excuse me, the Phillies have been on quite the tear since that uh, time. I, I do think they've lost uh, a game or two, but I think they went on a seven or eight game win streak after Girardi was let go. Obviously very big time underachieving out there in Philadelphia as I'm looking at the standings. Now they still, even with that run to get them back, I mean, they're nine and one in their last 10. They're 30 and 30 overall. Um, but still nine games back. And as we will talk about in a little bit, um, not the hottest team in the East. Uh, so for the Phillies, a change um, was obviously something that they felt was needed. And it, you can't really argue with the results so far. But Brianna, what are your thoughts on Joe Girardi getting the boot? I just wish it would turn out like this for the Angels at this point. <laughs> That's all I want. Yeah, it was definitely, uh, a, a, you know, you, you listen to the players and maybe some uh, some media out there in Philadelphia, it's, it, it wasn't good and they needed to change a culture and that's, that's what they got. Uh, and it, for the, at least for the moment, it seems like it has worked out in their favor, but we'll see how that goes uh, going forward. Still a lot of work to do in Philadelphia. Um, and you know, nine games back sitting at 30 and 30, still 102 games to go, but, uh, nine games back in third place with two of the hottest teams in baseball playing right now, uh, or at least one who's been very good all year. And then, you know, a very hot team that we'll get to in a bit in that national league. So not great news there for Philadelphia Phillies fans kind of on that same token or that same subject. We have Tony La Russa. Uh, there were a lot of, I, I would say, eyebrows being raised when he was hired on in or with the White Sox. There was some situations going down, maybe some coaching decisions that I don't think, I know I didn't agree with, um, walk intentionally walking somebody with two strikes and not only three, two, it was one and two. Uh, he, he walks Trey Turner, Max Muncie hits a three run homer to blow the game open. And Max Muncie, as you could imagine, was a little frustrated for getting walked to get, or getting uh, essentially chose over Trey Turner with two strikes. He was uh, let his uh, emotions out towards the end, but the next day Chicago white Sox fans uh, chanting fire Tony um, in unison. Uh, but Tony said he is not going to change anything. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But Brianna, what are your thoughts? Tony LaRusse's time in Chicago, I would have to say is at the very least he's on the hot seat. What are your thoughts? If, let's say if his pitcher was behind in the count, then I would understand it, but his pitcher was ahead of the count. So this doesn't make sense. You would rather get the strikeout and then, and then deal with Max Muncy. And if he hits a two run shot, that's fine. At least it wasn't an extra run that you could have prevented. Agreed. I mean, there's not much else to say about it. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if somehow he ends up getting fired and then somebody else who did get fired goes back to Chicago to go to the White Sox. Wow. Hey, you had to have thought it at some point too. I, I mean, that's definitely, I, I think 
you know, obviously we're not breaking news here, but uh, I don't think we're talking Joe Girardi here. I no. think we're more leaning towards the Joe Madden. My, yeah. I, I would, you know, that's an interesting one. I don't know that I could ever remember a team firing a manager and then hiring a new one. Now I know they have the interim managers, but going out and getting someone, but we haven't seen this situation, right? Where we literally saw two managers fired in what, two, I mean, three days. It, it may not happen like this season, but maybe next, like the start of next season. Cause if you think about it, Madden was with the angels before as a pitching coach and then left. And then he came back. Madden won a world series with the Chicago Cubs. So they may want him back in Chicago as well. Definitely. And so that, I, that's just what I was thinking yesterday. I that's, that's not too far fetched, <laughs> uh, especially end of the year. I think that's the time. And I think you could take a straw poll of white Sox fans. Um, a, you, you give a hundred of them the same question is Joe Madden, a better fit than Tony La Russa, I would have to imagine 90 plus percent, probably more, but I'll, I'll play low on this one and say 90% would say, yes, he is um, definitely something to keep an eye on. And now the White Sox have what, three months to essentially negotiate with him. If you want to look at it that way. Um, I don't think Madden's done, uh, but we will get to that here in a bit. But for the White Sox, their big issue right now is getting back into the AL central. Um, Obviously, if Tony Larusa is that guy to do it, fantastic. But if not, well, he may get fired by the All Star break. Yeah, I mean, well, I gotta feel like he's he probably got a ten game stretch where they're gonna look at it and see how he's doing. And one little slip up, one little let's call it well, questionable all, manager decision. From what I understand, the only reason he really got hired is because of the trust of the owner. Everybody else disagreed with it, but because the owner felt bad that he had not hired him or fired him before. That's why he brought him back. So honestly, we'll see what happens, but at some point the owners are going to have to listen to the fans and be like, Hey, so this isn't working. We need to try something else because obviously it doesn't seem like you're the right fit last year. Maybe this year, definitely not because of what you have contributed this year. And obviously it's not like Joe Madden who intentionally walked a guy. Um, oh yeah, very good. <laughs> it's very different because in this case, it did not go his way. <laughs> no, and like I keep going back to the two strikes. I mean, I don't understand. I mean, if you're going to think about walking a guy, do it with like just the one ball. Yeah, or or yeah, exactly. You throw a couple in the dirt and you didn't chase. Okay, hey, go 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 down. Uh, go take first. But one two, and let's be honest, Max Muncy is not a guy that. I would feel more comfortable pitching to. And I know it was lefty on lefty and the analytics and all that stuff. Um, but still it was very, very odd. And at the end of the day, it may cost him his job or at least be a part of it. So, but um, other news that we got going down some unfortunate news, believe me, the Dodgers are not a very, um, you know, we're not pro Dodgers on this podcast, but we are pro health. Um, we want everyone to be healthy. We don't want to see anybody get hurt. Um, but the news coming down, Walker Bueller out three months um, with us uh, with an injury. That's going to really hurt the Dodgers. Brianna, what are your thoughts on the Dodgers losing arguably their ace? Well, the question is going to be, will he be ready for playoffs and will they use him for playoffs? Or are they just going to let him sit out the rest of the year? Because by the time he's back, it's pretty much going to be postseason. Because Agreed. three months goes into September. Yeah. And, and you're not in the first game he is going to pitch. Now it is a little interesting because the way the minor leagues are set up, I don't know when their season ends, but generally these teams like to send their players to have a couple rehab starts. Well, middle of September, you may get one start out of him. If the season is still going, once again, I don't know the exact uh, calendar of those, but um, I think it'll be tight. For them but i agree with you i think in the next probably i'd say six weeks that would be decided um whether or not they're gonna bring him back because it's a different rehab obviously if you're rehabbing to come back in three months or hey chill for you know six seven months and we'll see you in uh march in arizona at spring training but either way i mean once again we're not gonna have any pity for the dodgers i do feel bad for walker bueller i like him 
minus the uniform he wears. Um, and it's tough, I'm, I'm sure, for him. It's really the first big injury he's had as well. Uh, so we'll see how that affects him. But it is time now to dive into the place that Brianna used to absolutely love, not so much anymore. It is the winner's circle. She's got some news. And I am going to mute myself and let my cat out before she rips the doors off the hinges. No, no, so no, 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 no. You, you're going to have a say in this first I part. will, I will, but uh, so give you, me You like may as well just not mute yourself seconds. right now. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. But for 15 seconds, I will be gone. Um, oh, there we go. Never mind. The door opened magically um, and we are good. But Brianna, the winner's circle, for better or worse, it's all yours. Hey, at least I got out of that slump. That's all I care about at this point. Look, they fired Madden on Friday, on my bad, Tuesday, they still lost a game or two before they actually ended up getting a win. So that their losing streak ended up going to 14 at one point um, before they finally got a win. But Madden did get fired, like we alluded to. And honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing him in Chicago again, whether it's for those dirty socks or the Cubs again, we will find out. Um, but honestly, I feel like they maybe should have given him at least like a little bit of a chance. Did you, did you see that he ended up getting a mohawk trying to pump up his players? And they didn't even see it. Nope. So he was trying. He, he was absolutely trying. He just wasn't given the chance because it was a 12 game losing streak, which they hadn't had in what, like. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the first one of his career with the angels obviously like since he got hired a few years ago and this team had turned around and then they just got the heart of their schedule and that schedule was rough and it's not going to end for the next few days nope and i don't appreciate it okay you have your say now <laughs> um you know i i agree with you i think he should have gotten more time um joe madden is he always has stories, right? Whether it was when he was in Tampa, I think he brought like Jeff Hanna in with a bunch of like zoo animals. And then he did things in Chicago and it seemed kind of on par for Joe Madden to go out and get a, a, a mohawk and, and dye it pink. Just unfortunately, apparently wasn't given the time to, I guess, try and sh share that mojo, if you will. Um, another thing too, I think one of, I think it was either the day after or two days after the Angels all came up um, listening to Nickelback, or that was their walk-up song, was Nickelback. They got shut out again. So, I mean, they, were, they tried to break it themselves, still couldn't do it. Obviously, they have finally, you know, at least ended the losing streak. Not a whole lot of fun there, but I, I, I really do wish Joe Madden would have got another shot. And, and one thing that just popped into my head, how do you feel? I mean, Rick Renteria must just be shaking his head because he was a manager for the Cubs for one year, uh, and then they booted him to get Madden in there and Madden goes and wins a world series. And then I believe two years ago, he was with the young white Sox, and he did okay with them. They booed him out to get Tony La Russa. So he's looking around going, okay, Madden got fired. La Russa probably will. And where's Rich Renteria, but Phil Nevin obviously is the, the interim manager. Um, I have served him at my, as a bartender, uh, as he is, uh, I don't know if he lives in RB still, but I know his son played at RB um, and obviously was a Padre for quite a long time. Good for him. Hopefully he can turn things around. He's got three months to prove that he is the manager. Um, but yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. I wish Madden would have been given more time. I mean, at least get to the all-star break, but you know, the angels, this is their year. They, they want to win and they felt like this was what they needed to do. A lot of rumors that Madden had lost the clubhouse. And you know what, if that's the case, time isn't going to isn't going to change that so at this point you just hope that the powers that be made the right decision and we will find out in the coming uh months and possibly years but yeah that's it, it's it's unfortunate because uh, madden was one of uh one of the best managers still is i still think he'll get a shot somewhere maybe like you said in chicago but that's what i got like i said it wouldn't surprise me if he ended up going back to chicago whether it was with the white Sox or if the cubs ended up firing uh david ross because, I mean, we've seen what he's done since he's gotten hired. So, I mean, I love him as a player. And maybe he just needs more time as a manager. But right now, he is not doing well. Yeah. 
Um, so I'm going to continue now. Uh, so they've now moved into third in the American League West. They are half a game behind the Rangers due to their loss to the Mets last night. Uh, they are two and eight in their last 10. They finally got a win over the Red Sox on Thursday. Otani pitched seven innings, four hits, one earned run, two walks, and six strikeouts. But offensively, he had a two-run home run, and so did Velasquez, who had a three-run home run. So that definitely helped. And then they lost the next two day, or they lost the next night. Look, their schedule has not been kind because uh, right after the Red Sox, they got the Mets. Uh, so they finally they got a win over the Mets on Saturday, and this is the day I, I could have probably won my uh, fantasy football or fantasy baseball week. If I did not have Trout on the bench, only but that was only because he was day to day and I didn't know when he was coming back. He went three for four with a with two home runs. Walsh, who I also had on the bench, went four for five. He struck out in the first inning and then became the eighth angel to hit the cycle. That's awesome. Yeah, and not for my fantasy. Not team. for your fantasy team, but for him, yes. Now, Otani and Velasquez also had a home run in this game. Uh, so Otani also went three for four. Look, I made a horrible decision in my fantasy game. But to be fair, one of them was day to day, so I wasn't going to be sure if he was playing. So the next two days, uh, so they don't they have an off day today. And then tomorrow, Tuesday and uh, Wednesday, they will be facing the pesky Dodgers in a two game series. And then they have the Mariners Thursday through Sunday, which is gonna be rough because it's not a normal four game series. It's actually five. They have a double header on Saturday. And then after that, they could maybe get a reprieve and have the Royals. Oh, good. I hope so. I sure you hope and me so. Both. You yeah. and me both. Look, <laughs> if they can take three of the five against the Mariners, I'll be happy. Because look, the Mariners are 27 and 33. The Angels are 29 and 33. Nine games back of those cheaters. If they can take three of five from Mariners, I'll be happy. If they could just take one from the Dodgers, I think both of us will be happy. As long as they could just take one from yeah. the Dodgers. And then they've got the Royals, which hopefully should help. And then after the Royals, they get the Mariners again. And then they host Tony La Russa maybe so we will see what happens obviously next week this week might be a little rough and yeah. hopefully they can get out of this soon because the start of july is not going to be any better that's the tough part obviously you know with the dodgers come into town uh we'll talk to them about them momentarily uh not the normal dodgers if you will but still a very good baseball team uh but i will say look for the for the angels maybe the wins haven't come as, as, as much as we you'd want or things like that, but at least in the last, what, four or five days, the bats have at least woken up. Um, you know, obviously trout was like, Oh, for 30 at one hey, point. Did they do CPR on the bat? <laughs> I, I guess so. They must've or whatever. Well, he they was did. Also, but he was also injured for a few days. So he was day to day. So okay. maybe that little break helped. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday he was DHing. So that didn't really help because Otani was out of the lineup to getting a break. Oh, yeah and they lost four to one and I was not happy because it was one to one. Do they play Otani in the field at all? Or is he no. only DH? Okay. He's only DH. Cause as I know, like, I know he's only, he's only DH. I think that was only if he wasn't, his arm was going to take a lot more time than it did. Got and it. if he didn't have the season he did last year. <laughs> no shit. Yeah. You gotta protect <laughs> that. So yeah, I understand that. So um, yeah, it, it's at least the bats are somewhat waking up, whether it was CPR or just, you know, them seeing the ball better, whatever it was, that's at least a positive. Um, now, hopefully everything else will kind of figure itself out. They can start winning series and that's the big yeah, thing. Like, I, I know last night it was, it was rough because of the shadows. Ooh. So like for the few innings, they had the shadows like working against them, like at the plate. So that kind of contributed to it. But once I got later in the day they still it, it was two to two to one or three to one by the time I turned it off so mm. and that was like in the eighth inning gotcha 
yeah, those four o'clock starts here on the West Coast uh, in, in the middle of summer or the beginning of summer, I guess I should say, are a little tricky uh, with the shadows. I know the Padres or Petco had that problem. Not problem, but they had those situations. A few years back, it was the bubble where the Padres weren't playing here, but there were some teams playing at Petco. I don't quite remember how that all went down, but there were a lot of teams who had to get used to that. But Hopefully uh, it'll be a brighter, brighter uh, winner's circle next week. Yes. And and my question for you, obviously to lead into this, it, into yours, if let's say you guys win tonight, I know the Dodgers don't play tonight. They don't play till tomorrow. Do you guys finally get the lead? You know, I'm, I'm not sure. I think it goes half like game. win percentage because it well, is a half, half game. Back. So no, you know what? I believe. So after tonight, the Padres will have played two more games than the Dodgers. Um, they would have one more win and one more loss. Like I said, I don't know where that goes. I'm not a mathematician. I don't know the win percentage on that. But either way, obviously, the Padres get the job done tonight. Um, they will be even with the Dodgers, and that's perfectly fine, even if you know they're lower in the win percentage. Uh, the Padres have been playing some good baseball of late, maybe not so much um, last week. Uh, but w- what's up, Brianna? Pitching, starting pitcher for tomorrow's Angels Dodgers. Keep in mind, it's at Dodgers. Uh, Cindergard versus Gonsolin. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Well, it's... Cindergard can't be playing like he has. Yeah, I was just going to say that I think they showed his stats since he kind of um, called out quit. the Mets. And yeah, and then Wednesday, it's Detmers versus Anderson, which okay. I think that might be better if because Detmers actually did well the last outing. Yeah. Cindergard is the one that has been struggling. Yeah. And Gonsolin is really good. He's got a lot of movement on that pitch, uh, especially being at Dodger Stadium. Either way, uh, the Dodgers are projected to win that game. Yeah. All those games. Both I need them right. to take I need them to lose one of them. Yes, me too. Just one. <laughs> I just need the Angels to take one. <laughs> All but I want. Looking at the uh Padres currently 37 and 24, uh seven and three in their last 10. Unfortunately, they have lost two in a row. Um, much like Brianna was talking about her, the angels and Mariners playing a doubleheader, the Padres and Rockies played a doubleheader this past Saturday. Um, they split the day night doubleheader and then the Rockies did win on Sunday. So that series ended up being two, two, but for the Padres, their bats woke up against the Mets, which was key midweek. They took two out of three from the Metropolitans. And that was a a nice lead into it. The Padres actually were riding a little four game losing streak before they stubbed their toe twice against Colorado. Um, overall though, I think if you're a Padre fan, you have to be incredibly optimistic looking at the way the standings are set up. Obviously, as Brianna kind of talked about uh, the Padres are a half game behind the Dodgers, a chance to essentially be tied with them after tonight, uh, still a long way to go, but um, because of the Dodgers struggles, which we'll talk about here in a bit, um, the Padres, even through their little hiccups um, with their offense, they've been able to stay close. And if they can keep things rolling, uh, maybe take the lead. But yeah, they have three with the Cubs currently, as I pull up the schedule, um, or excuse me, four with the Cubs, all at Wrigley. Um, three of them are going to be night games, which are kind of nice. Uh, you don't see that too often at Wrigley, three out of four games being night games, but uh, they'll be playing um, in at 5 p.m. Pacific time, uh, and then they'll play 11.20 Pacific time on Thursday. So Monday through Wednesday, 5. Thursday, they'll go at 11.20, and then head uh, back west, not all the way home, but they'll stop off in Colorado where they'll take on the Rockies for three, uh, and then have an, you know Arizona for three, and then Philly for three at home kind of to end um, the, the month of June. We are still about two weeks away from the Dodgers and Padres meeting up. I believe they've only played a three-game series uh, so far this year, and I believe the Dodgers took two out of three. So that'll be a nice measuring stick. But the Padres, they have a, pretty much winnable games coming forward. You know, you got four against the Cubs, three against the Rockies, three against the Diamondbacks, four against the Phillies, and two against the Diamondbacks again before you head up to Chavez, Chavez Ravine, you know, in that what 14, 15 game stretch, I'd like to see them win at least 10 of those. Cause you're going to have to do that to stay with the Dodgers. So looking ahead, that's, that's what it is. Obviously first tough start of McKenzie, McKenzie Gore's career. 
uh, this past didn't weekend. Didn't appreciate it. Sorry. I didn't appreciate oh, it. I had that's to right. You had to. Not it. Yeah. Well, he. I think that was his tenth career start, and he had an ERA below one point five. So eventually, it was going to happen. Um, the Rockies got it again, or you know, did did it to him, if you will. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, he's still having a great year. Uh, and, and the Padres bats have started to wake up. Jake Cronenworth continues to, uh, you know, rake, Jake the rake. That's what he's been doing. Uh, Manny Machado continuing to be very consistent, both at the plate and on the field. So for the Padres, they're feeling good, um, but they still have a lot of work to do, obviously, like every team in the majors, um, but a nice 15 game stretch where I feel like they they're better than pretty much every team when they go out there. So hopefully they can, you know, put some, put some wins on the board and stay with the Dodgers. But with that, it is time to dive into our three up and three down segment. Brianna, you had the ups this week. So why don't you get us started off? Well, this first step is currently in, their game is currently delayed at the moment. Okay. My guess is weather in Washington. Yeah. Uh, so this first team is obvious because they're on an 11 game win streak. It is the Atlanta Braves. They are making up some ground on those Mets who did lose one against the Angels, and I'm very happy to say that. Uh, look, they're 34 and 27. The Mets are 40 and 22. They're still five and a half games back, but if they can continue the streak, I think that they'll be even with the Mets soon enough, and uh, one of those New York teams will finally go down, just like one of the LA teams went down. Yes. Unfortunately yeah, and- for me, I wish it was the other. <laughs> me too. They kind of did. We'll get to that in here momentarily. Not, not, not like mine that. did. Not like that. No, not as dramatic. Um, but yeah, for the for the Braves, eleven in a row, um, wins in a row. It, it's it's pretty incredible. But not really, you know. I mean, this is a team that maybe didn't win eleven in a row last year, or eleven plus, if you expect them to win the Nash or beat the Nationals, like I do. Um, but they, they were mediocre, probably under 500 around this time last year. And we all know what they did. They went on to win the, uh, the East and eventually the world series. The only difference here is though, you know, you didn't have that team like the Mets this year that were just setting a blistering pace, but only five and a half games back two weeks ago, this was a team that was probably on our downs and we were wondering what was going to happen to them. Um, and now they're uh, playing well and they're ready to uh, try and defend that title. Well, if you look at the East, though, too, the Mets have only won a game because they lost the Angels on Saturday. And if you look at the rest of the National League East, they're all on they've all lost yesterday. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. And we're expecting Washington to obviously lose more than just the one. We'll see. But I guess we will have to find out tomorrow what happens. Yeah. Hopefully they can get that in tonight, but it could turn into a, a one of those. And the, Mar- and the Marlins have the Phillies. So, oh, okay. so either way, one of those teams is going to come out victorious, Yep. but not like the, not like the Braves have been. I was about no. to say angels and I was, yeah. Eek. Oh, hopefully, hopefully in like a month, we'll be talking about the angels like this, but God, I hope so. our uh, first down of the week, I take a lot of uh, satisfaction in this. I know Brianna does as well. Um, the Los as long as they're not on the other side, we're good. Exactly. Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, they're <laughs> look, you're not going to see too many teams on this down list that have a record like 37 and 23. However, four and six in their last 10, they've lost three in a row. And once again, this is a team that got swept at home, not during the stretch, but swept at home by the Pittsburgh Pirates. So the Dodgers, they also obviously lost Walker Bueller for a bit. We're probably lucky, um, maybe not lucky because they were leading in the game, but they got uh, the benefit of the doubt with, of course, that La Russa decision. So there's a lot of uh, things up in the air. Dodgers still in first place, but only a half game. And that could you know, end tonight. Uh, but they're definitely on a bit of a skid and probably one of their, I think this is the first time they've ever been on this list this late in the season um, without us just trying to troll them. Um, But Brianna, uh, what are your thoughts? Dodgers on the down. You know, if you had chosen the other two teams for the downs, I would have been happy too. Too bad all three of them aren't on this down list. Yeah. One of these days I want to see all three of them down there, but I don't think it's going to happen. 
because the Yankees just keep running away with it and Houston is just being Houston and I hate it because they had overtaken the Angels and now the Angels have been overtaken by the Rangers so (sighs) yeah yeah I need Houston to be on that down list I I really need Houston on that down list yep they're only five and five in their last 10 um I don't care I need Houston on that down list (laughs) and to see the Angels back up in that first place spot there you go What's our second up of the week there, Brianna? Um, so the next two ups, the final two ups are going to come from the American League. Uh, the first one's going to be Toronto. They finally overtook the Rays, which honestly we kind of saw coming at some point. The Rays just have been struggling. Uh, Toronto's only eight and a half games back of the Yankees, and I, I don't want to see anybody injured on the Yankees, but I really need them to start losing. I really want them to start losing. I should say Uh, Toronto is 35 and 24 and they're six and four in their last 10. Look, if you look at the AL East, everybody's had a win. Like they're, they all won yesterday. Yankees won four in a row. Baltimore, unfortunately has won two and everybody else has won one. So they all lost on Saturday. Well, most of them lost on Saturday. I need to, I need these teams to just start coming down. Because I need the Angels in that wild card spot at the least. Yeah. Uh, Toronto, obviously, this is kind of where they expected to be. They, they, they're they feeling good. Now, you know, eight and a half games behind the Yankees. I mean, the Yankees are on pace to win like 120 games. I don't, I don't expect want it. that to be the case. I don't think, you know, eventually they're going to stub their toe for a little bit, hopefully at least, and we get them on that down list. Um, but you know, it's absolutely incredible to me the just to kind of show the dominance of the Yankees compared to everybody else. Let's, let's take Baltimore out of the run differential picture. Okay. Toronto, Tampa Bay, and Boston are all plus 22 or higher in the run differential combine those three. It's still less than the plus 127 for the Yankees. Uh, so, so uh, Toronto has a lot of work to do. Um, but they're, they're moving in the right direction. And I, I think the East, I don't want to call it yet, but my goodness, it would take a lot um, for the Yankees and it could happen. No doubt about it. Still early enough, but it would take a lot for the Yankees to kind of stumble the way they've been playing, but um, we'll see how that goes, but good for Toronto. They're at least moving up and I don't know if they're putting pressure on the Yankees, but at least, uh, you know, eight and a half back they're single digits essentially at this point. That's kind of what you're looking for. So uh, our second down of the week, unfortunately, uh, it is going to be the National League Central that I believe takes center stage over these next two downs. Yes, um, I got that right. So first one will be the Chicago Cubs. They've lost six in a row. Uh, they are three and seven in their last 10 uh, and 23 and 36 and still sitting in fourth place. I mean, obviously, Cincinnati is still at the bottom. Um, Pittsburgh, even with their own six game losing streak, um, they're still a game and a half ahead of Chicago. This is good news for Padre fans because that's who the Cubs are going to play. Um, but as Brianna kind of talked about David Ross, uh, ooh, my, that heat, that seat might be getting pretty hot at 30. Oh, excuse me. 23 and 36. Brianna, what are your thoughts on your Cubbies? Look, I knew this was coming eventually. So, uh, can I not? That's fair. Oh, okay. wow. It, yeah, it, it was expected. Yeah, I don't think because you made me us... talk about the angels last week. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, and I think we kind of expected the Cubs to be in fourth place. Now maybe Pittsburgh, Cincinnati flip flop them. And that's where we thought it would end, but um, we didn't have high hopes for the Cubs, but still six game losing streak along with the pirates. Just throw them in there as well. Um, that is our second down of the week, but our third and final up Brianna, what you got for us. It's going to be Cleveland. Those guardians, and I'm really glad that I wasn't even about to attempt to say the other word. Uh, look, it I was about to do it. The guardians are 29 and 27. They're only three games back of Minnesota. The, the reason that they're on the up list is because they have gained some leverage over the White Sox, who are six games back of Minnesota and three games back of Cleveland. So that's the main reason. Plus Cleveland's also seven and three in their last 10 compared to the White Sox is four and six. Look, those White Sox are struggling, but the guardians are going up. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see them overtake the twins at some point. 
yeah, it's it's good for good for and, Cleveland. And the run differential for the Guardians is higher than the Twins. Yeah. I was just going to bring that up. I, I, I figured mean, you were about to. Yeah, <laughs> that's that odd. You don't see that anywhere else, um, even close, really. I mean, even the Padres Dodgers are only separated by a half a game. They are not separated, but they're separated by a lot more than uh, just a few runs in that run differential category. So that is very interesting there. Um, and yeah, seven and three in their last 10 moving up. Uh, they'll probably have their sights focused on Minnesota, like you talked about. Uh, and I expect that they can keep this rolling. Good for Minnesota, or excuse me, good for Cleveland though, because this is a team that really, what it's Jose Ramirez and a bunch of other guys there, if we're being honest. So unfortunately uh, I'm looking at their upcoming schedule. Oh, is it, is it going to get rough? Well, they have the Rockies. Okay. And then the weekend they have the Dodgers Ooh, in okay, LA. Yeah. And then they have the Twins. Ooh, okay. Wow, that's a tough one. Come out west and then go straight back into the into the Midwest uh, back in there. So yeah, an and Minnesota is hosting those. Okay. Oof. Yeah, that's going to be a tough so, one. Uh, well, they get a day off in between, but it's still a rough go. So if yeah. Cleveland wants to overtake Minnesota, it's going to have to be within this next week. I don't know why I was about to click on that. I want to click on the twins uh, and the <laughs> twins have the Mariners today through Wednesday, the diamondbacks for the weekend. Mm. So Advantage Cleveland's going to come out with some wins over the Dodgers. And then especially against the twins. I I'm pretty sure they will be fine against the Rockies. Like it's the Rockies. So yeah, that is a Coors field though. Yeah. Um, let me double check. Uh, yes. So that could be a little, little funky. Everybody, you know, the, 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 I, I don't think Cleveland gets, and they're going from call. They have a one o'clock game, uh, at least mountain time, um, against the Rockies. And then thankfully they'll be done early enough to get to LA the next day. Cause that's when they're playing the Dodgers. Got it. Got it. In the so, evening game. Yeah. Hey, but uh, right side that, uh, what is it? Friday game is going to be on Fox. Oh, so it should be an interesting watch. Interesting. Good for that. That'll be a good one. Uh, you don't see Colorado and Cleveland matched up on national TV. So get no, a chance no, we, we just need Cleveland to beat the Dodgers. That's what we both need. <laughs> I, I wholeheartedly agree on that. Uh, and then I'm still looking over at you for uh, those two games. But anyways. You don't think I want it? <laughs> I need it. <laughs> but it's going to be Cindergard who's going to determine that one. Yeah. Our third and final down of the week. We're staying in the NL Central. Uh, they didn't really move down in the standings, but uh, they, they're two and eight in their last 10. Milwaukee has given up the lead. Actually, no, I take it back. They did move down in the standings. I'm sorry. Uh, they actually were, you know, they were in, the Milwaukee Brewers were in first place of the uh, National League Central for the better part of this year. Um, and then St. Louis has taken back first place i think it was the first time since like late april so almost a full month they, of Milwaukee, they unfortunately but... ran into the padres and the phillies yeah. yeah three out of four to the padres um and, and this, probably this should upcoming... have lost that first game but that, then... that this upcoming week for milwaukee is not looking good yeah there you go Who they got? they've got the mets before they get the reds Ooh. the reds they'll be fine it's the mets yeah hey, don't that, sleep I mean, on the reds they suck and then they have they the cardinals well no, no. And then, so they go from Mets, Reds to Cardinals. Ooh, okay. Yeah, they better get as many as they can against those red legs uh, before, uh, before they take on those Cardinals. And that will be a big series uh, in, in the National League Central. But yeah, two and eight, 34 and 28, not terrible, but a half game out in the Central, a run differential of only five. That's not great but i i think milwaukee will be fine um i think we both expected it to be a two-horse race all year um st louis probably going to have the advantage going forward but milwaukee still has some really good pitching uh they can you know try and figure that one out but anything else you want to add to the milwaukee saga brianna nope got it i kind of want i do kind of want to see the cardinals win though just because pujos and molina so yeah sorry brewer fans <laughs> They'll, they'll live. They'll, uh, they got their uh, brats and, you know, they're still on the hangover of the Bucks winning the NBA finals. What was it last year, two years ago? Uh, so the Packers oh, will be going. So. What do you have? Celtics or Warriors? Warriors. 
Warriors. No. I, 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 I mean, I don't want them to win. I want Boston to win as crazy as that is, but I expect Golden State to win. I, there's a specific player on the Celtics I want to win a ring. So I'm Who's rooting that? for the Celtics. Derek White. Oh, okay. UNLV? What? Derek no. White. Did he play at UNLV? No, I must be getting him mixed no, up. No, 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 no. He played a senior year at Boulder, but he oh, played okay. his first three years at the University of Colorado in Colorado Springs. So I got, got to see him play for a year in person. So I really want to see him get a oh. ring. All right. Yeah. I mean, I want, I want Boston. I mean, I very rarely cheer uh, for anything Boston related, um, but you know, obviously the, you know, Golden State, it's, they, they've had a bit of a dynasty. I know they struggled a bit, you know, with injuries with Clay Thompson, things like that, but let's get some new, somewhat new blood in there. I don't think we can call the Celtics new blood, but anyways, well, but the team in general, no, but the players on the team. Yes. Fair enough. Fair enough. But Brianna, what are your final thoughts here for this episode of the change up? Well, I'd say let's keep an eye on the college world series this weekend as well. Yeah. Tennessee, number, the number one, one Tennessee going down. Yeah. To, to, to Notre Dame. Yikes. That was uh, that was a good one. There were, I, I really, I've been watching. I didn't get to watch as many of the super regionals as I, as I watched the actual regionals last weekend. Um, but you know, that tournament, the way it's set up, um, you just never really know. And I'm, believe me, I am the last person to sing Notre Dame's praises as a USC fan. I will go well out of my way to, uh, not give them any props, but they had a great weekend, uh, a weekend that nobody really gave them a chance to win a game, let alone take the, uh, best of three series. So we will keep an eye on that as well. See, who, uh, see if, uh, oh. you know, we're going to see someone new, huh? Freaking Oklahoma. Yeah, women's college world series. Yeah, took down Texas. Was it a sweep, right? 2 0? First game was a run rule. Oh, yikes. Damn it. Second game, I thought Texas was going to win, and then oh, Oklahoma came right back. Ah, uh, fair enough. Yikes. Well, Oklahoma is apparently back to backs, Oklahoma. I I yeah, but apparently Oklahoma has run rolled in 40 of their like 50 something or 60 something games this year. Jocelyn Allo is a monster. <laughs> yeah. So the best team won um, for better or worse. Uh, I know there were probably some people who were cheering for other teams, but it sounds like the better team won in the, uh, you know, college softball uh, or excuse me, the, co- the women's college world series. Um, but we'll see on the, on the men's side this weekend, or I think it goes a little bit longer than a weekend, but over the next, I think seven to 10 days. So, but with that, thank you all so much for listening to this edition of the change up presented by the first off the bench podcast network. Everyone comes off the bench. We are first. It's time for y'all to go wash your hands and stop hating everybody. We'll talk to you all very soon. Take care.